Ladies and gentlemen, the notorious Conor McGregor. Baby, we did it. I'm going to knock him out inside four rounds. Mark my words. Floyd, money, Mayweather. I don't give a fuck if it's a ring, it's an octagon. Put me in there and I'ma kick ass. Don't be talking shit. You do give a fuck if it's an octagon. All oh, workers, what? Well, point to the fucking easy work there. You line them up and I knock them down like bowling pins. In August 26, I'ma knock this bitch out too. And if you want eight ounce gloves, let's put eight ounce gloves on. Does this mic work? Well then, fuck that mic. On the count of three, I want everyone in this arena to scream at the top of your lungs. Fuck the Mayweather's. One, two, three. He won't do shit. Hello and welcome to Martial Arts Chat Podcast and it's McGregor versus Mayweather special here getting a breakdown ahead of what is possibly uh, the biggest fight in boxing. <laughs> it's incredible I'm even saying that but we've got obviously a two-time UFC champion, iconic figure of, of this generation, the notorious Conor McGregor and he takes on the undefeated and arguably the greatest boxer of all time in Floyd Money Mayweather. Joining us on the discussion tonight we have Fighting Out of the Blue Corner and representing Team McGregor, Mr. Derek Bo of Derek Bo MMA. Derek, how you doing, my friend? Always good to be back, my friend. Ready to talk about this fight because I am actually excited about it. Contrary to what a lot of people who follow MMA and boxing and are very closely attached to the sports, some people are just not too keen on this fight. I'm right. actually super excited for it, so you're ready to get this going. Glad to hear it, mate. And fighting out the red corner, the Lone Star beer probably is in hand. Representing Team Money Mayweather, we have Kevin Jones at the main event. Kev, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. You know I got that Lone Star beer. Anytime that I talk to John Boy, I got to have my Lone Star beer next to me. He likes me better when I'm a little lubed up. So, uh, Yeah, rep- Red Corners represent, man. I got a lot of respect for Derek Bowe, but I'm taking him down today. Mayweather, Ooh. all day, trying to get that Mayweather money back. 21 years! Um, well, let's start with some of the some of the hot topics that have led up to this fight. Um, obviously, you guys are the experts, so I'll let you get through these. But, but before, actually, I, I go on to, to that and, and later fan questions, I just want to pull the curtain back a little bit here on the podcast and declare that my boxing knowledge, and Kevin will probably tell you this as well, is slightly dated, for want of a better phrase. Um, I'm a guy who, as a wee boy, growing up in the 90s, I watched... British boxing greats like Chris Eubank, uh, Nigel Benn, Frank Bruno, Joe Calzaghe, Nassim Ahmed. We had all those growing up in the, in the 90s. And my father was a, a, a big boxing fan and, you know, obviously he grew up in the sort of Fraser Alley days and, and later Tyson. So I was pretty spoiled for, for choice in terms of, of, of boxing. And sort of in the 2000s is really when I sort of zoomed out of, of, of boxing, if you like. You know, that's when the clip shows came in and held on to the heavyweight titles the same way as they probably held on to their, their opponents. I didn't really find it too pleasing. And so I missed a lot of the, the Roy Jones and probably to, to a latter extent some of Floyd Mayweather's fights as well. Um, so I have a slightly, well I said at the top of the show, a slightly dated view of, of boxing. But that being said, my boxing fandom um, was dwindling, like I said, as MMA. Sort of, my, my interest meant more to that side. So with Mayweather and McGregor fighting here, it's uh, personally for me, it's like the young fan in me gets to watch something historic, and and the the sort of present day fan, you know, gets to to, to see that as well. It's, so it's, it's it's something really special for me. But let's get to these big talking points. We'll start with the press tour. This now infamous press tour, um, and I'll start with Derek on this one. Um, Derek, we had four major cities, you know, they had the circus come to town, if you like. Um, they were all entertaining in different ways, but speaking for the McGregor camp on this one, who do you think came out on top, and, and, and what does that mean going into going into the fight itself? 
I, I think that uh, I think McGregor easily came out in this one on top, and part of the reason is because I think he had the best moments of the entire press tour. Uh, albeit, I think the, the his best moments took place for sure in one city, and that was Toronto. I thought mm. he did very, very well in Toronto, um, and I thought he won that matchup more decisively than any other matchup that took place in the four cities. Um, obviously, city number three in New York was really, really bad. Um, part of that had to do with, uh, you know, it was re- the content was running thin. Uh, nobody could hear anything. It, w- it was just a really, really bad setup all the way around. Um uh, the show number one, it was kind of like nobody really knew what to expect on that one. And then I thought the fourth show in uh, in London was actually pretty good. But I thought Toronto was definitely produced the best fireworks on the side of McGregor. And uh, Mayweather, you know, I, he had his moments as well. But he a lot of the times he, re- he tended to repeat himself um, and use the same content over and over again in each city, which was a little, you know, I guess tiresome in a way. Yeah, and do you think that actually, you know, has is going to have an effect when it comes to to the fight itself? Do you think that has any bearing at all? To be completely honest, absolutely not. I don't think any of the press tour stuff has any effect on the fight whatsoever. Um, I, I, I mean, I'll just touch on this. I think the really only thing that does have an effect, and I think it's a really big mental thing that not a lot of people are mentioning, is the fact that it does something to a man when he knows if there were no rules, he could literally mm. be yeah. rendered defenseless yeah. by another man and obviously those rules are implemented i get that but it's still something in your psyche that knows that these rules i mean as mcgregor says are literally keeping him from being badly injured and kevin what be you made you know this press tour was 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 maybe other the guy that got on here or, or did he play it just as he wanted to and obviously your thoughts on how that'll play into the fight mate no it's not gonna play in the fight at all if anything if anybody's getting frustrated these deals is conor mcgregor Mayweather, you know, as as the guy says, I mean, he's sitting back on the throne, dude. I mean, he he could give a shit less what Conor McGregor or anybody else is saying about him. One thing we got to realize when we talk about uh, Mayweather, you'll run a lot of people and say, oh, I fucking hate Mayweather. So ask yourself why you hate him, man. You hate him because he wants you to hate him. He, he, he made the decision to go left before the De La Hoya fight. And, uh, you know, he's really played into that villain role. If you talk to anybody that's ever been to his gym or anybody, I guarantee you out there in Vegas, everybody's chomping at the bit to wait on this guy, carry his bag, or do anything for him because he's hooking everybody up with huge tips all over the place. I've talked to people, uh, uh, a friend of mine that, uh, you know, I guess since they legalized pot, I don't really need his services that much anymore, but he's a little Venezuelan <laughs> guy, and he stays down on uh, Fremont Street. He's my man. Shout out to John down at the smoke shop on Fremont Street. He could hook you up. <laughs> but uh, I'll probably still go to him because I, I, like, I like doing the black market thing. There you go. Anyways, um, his, his brother had, or cousin had worked out uh, on his lawn crew for years. So the guy's, the guy's one of the nicest guys ever. Now, you know, if we, if we want to say who won these stand-up, because this wasn't a press conference. The press is there and they ask questions. This was uh, more like a, stand, a shitty stand-up battle. And uh, <laughs> neither one of these guys are comedians. I thought, I mean, and I'll stick up for Mayweather. I'm in the red corner. I was going to do it anyways. But, I mean, a lot of the stuff McGregor says is regurgitated bullshit. He says the same things. I thought it was definitely classic on his part not to bring up any of the domestic stuff or his legal problems. Uh, besides, outside the tax thing, which, which you know, that Mayweather can sell a house and pay off all those taxes and still have sent $10 million sitting there, and I think he got about a half a dozen of them houses like that. But who won? I mean, I think that's very much dependent on your perception of these two guys and and uh, who you like. Man. R- Ricky Hatton's been retired, John Boy. Let's move. You know what I mean? You got to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got a guy, uh, Irish guy from over there, Mickey Conlon. He'd be a good guy to uh, to start start hanging your hat on over there. Okay. He, he's uh, got moved to the United States and has been fighting. But, yeah, man, uh, who won or not, you know, that's debatable, man. I like – I've something about Conor McGregor has always irked me. And I'm going to say Mayweather won. You know what I mean? But I, I like – I'm going for Floyd in the fight. I know I'm going to make a ton of money betting on him. He's made me some money in the past, man. So, you know, he, he's my he's my guy for sure. So if you ask me who won, some of the stuff he did was pretty clever, and you could tell he kind of pissed Connor off. And one particular point was when he grabbed that Irish flag out of the crowd. Yeah, Connor yeah. didn't really know what the fuck to do, but he knew he was going to do fu- – that pissed him off. He was going to do something, his, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, so he grabs the bag of money. And I thought it was hilarious when he fucking threw the money all over the place. And then he had totally had him set up when, when Connor says, well, th- this these are all just ones. 
you, you, you cheap motherfucker. And he's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's because you're, you're a one dollar motherfucker. That's $1. why they won. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So put two dollars in there for this two dollar motherfucker over here. I <laughs> said, the fans can't fight for you. Well, let's look at next up on our agenda is the recent news about the change of the size of gloves. Uh, I think it was from 10 to 8 ounce. Or now in play. Um, let's start with Kevin this time. Kevin, I heard somewhere actually that Mayweather has been using, you know, 8 ounce gloves for the majority of his fights. So surely he's used to them. Would this not be an advantage for Mayweather in this fight? Anything that happens in this fight is because Mayweather wants it to happen from start to finish. You know, uh, I'd say the only thing that he. Uh, and really, I mean, you know, even the 154-pound thing, the reason that's happening is because Conor d- does want to make 147. But I think even that, I mean, why why would Floyd Mayweather want to uh, stress his body out and, and have to make a weight when when he's more comfortable coming in there at, you know, about probably, you know, I think he's coming about 149 and a half for, for these uh, bigger fights. Yeah. And being a little older, he might come in, uh, you know, a couple pounds heavier than that. And I think that's one of the reasons the commission – I was really surprised that they approved this deal. But you got to think, man, this is Floyd Mayweather. He's made that, that, that county and that uh, state a ton, a ton of money over the years. I mean, some people would argue that he likes fighting in Nevada because the, the rules allow him to uh, you know, shoot his hands up with the light that came before the fights. But, yes, he's been using eight-ounce gloves – the majority of his career. I mean, I can think of the De La Hoya fight. They used 10-ounce gloves for sure because that was up at 154. And I believe uh, when he fought Ricky Hatton, I don't know if Hatton wanted to use the bigger gloves or what the deal with that, but I do know that they used uh, 10-ounce gloves in that fight. So, yes, 8-ounce gloves is going to be more comfortable with Floyd. It was his idea in the first place. He's the one that got it done. A guy like uh, McGregor, although he started making money for that state, he doesn't have the, the clout that Mayweather has in the state. And I think one of the big reasons that the commission did allow it, Floyd probably had his people go there and say, look, Floyd doesn't come in at weighing 154 pounds. He's not going to weigh 154 pounds. He wants this guy to be able to use eight-ounce gloves. And so they made it happen. And, you know, the, uh, the, the, rule, the rule guy in me says, well, look, dude, they had, a, they had a meeting at some point in time, sat down, decided that for the safety of these guys, they're going to have to use 10-ounce gloves if they're at 154 pounds or higher down and they did a rule like this to protect the fighters and i think they should stick to it but you know in in this case man i mean i don't think it matters one way or another dude i mean the facts of this matter is it's like that movie the other guys where they're talking about you know if i was a tuna fish and you were a lion this is like throwing (laughs) if you you know my honest opinion of it it's like throwing a tuna fish out onto the uh sahara sahara and letting a lion chomp it up dude you know there there's not much of a chance that Connor could have no gloves on in this fucking fight, and he's still not going to win it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, and wow. I'll uh, I'll go against Derek. I'm, I'm probably going to piss you off, Mister Bo. I apologize. <laughs> in the well, Derek, what are but, your you thoughts know, on this? Uh, you know, the eight ounce gloves, and uh, some people are saying it helps McGregor because he's the power puncher. But, but what's your thoughts and? And, and also what, what Kevin had to say. I mean, I'll preface by saying, of course, it helps McGregor. He is the bigger puncher. I mean, that's definitely something that's going in his favor now. And here's the thing. Um, Kevin, Kevin brought up a good point. He says that nothing happens in this fight that Mayweather doesn't want. And I don't think that's true. Uh, because I because there was a reason why Mayweather stated all these st- stipulations going into the fight. They must be 10-ounce glove. They have to be. They cannot be horsehair. They cannot be Mexican gloves. He didn't want this 8-ounce glove change. This is all a PR move. This was something where, like, because P- he was getting tired of people calling him out. Yeah, people say Mayweather doesn't care. He cares. Of course he cares. He does well with dealing with it, but of course he still cares. He saw he saw this as, you know what, I'll give Connor every advantage I can. So I'm going to say, oh, let's make it eight-ounce gloves, but I know it's never going to happen. Then what does the commission do? Oh, shit, they make it happen. Hmm. So now that it's happening, it kind of backfired on him a little bit, in my personal opinion. I think he never really wanted this to be eight-ounce gloves because why would you ever sit down and be very, very strategic in the negotiation of this fight? And then now it's like, oh, it's OK. No, nah, man, this is what happened. He was calling. He, he was stating this to say, hey, you know what? I don't care who is this. Conor McGregor is never going to beat me anyway. And then the commission called his bluff on it and say, hey, let's make this a let's make this an entertaining fight. Let's see what happens. And now he's like, oh, shit, I got to use eight ounce gloves at 154. Wow, I mean, who, from my, from where I'm sitting, it's like, who knows? But it's still, um, right. if my understanding of it is right, it's like they're breaking their own rules in terms of you have to have a certain glove size for a certain yeah. weight class, right? So, um, yeah. But this fight 
is just it's not for any title or anything it is a not a freak show fright what am I trying to say it's a spectacle isn't it so the more they can do dramatic moves like this I take that point the more more publicity it's probably going to get if it hasn't got you know enough PR already Shut your fucking mouth. so let's move on to the next item which is the infamous a uh, sparring video was it a push knockdown a uh, poly what the fuck is it Taglatelli sorry you guys told me second name a minute ago um, whatever the fuck the guy's name is Polly whatever I told you I'm not in touch with boxing for those listening so if you're screaming his name Annie, I, I apologise I could probably name you that's maybe, actually maybe top that's five a perfect boxers. way to that's actually the perfect way to uh, <laughs> anna- uh, pronounce his name Polly whatever the fuck you, you <laughs> 